G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're in Hilo, Hawaii and I'm inside a giant clump of hibiscus, Hibiscus tiliaceus. This is a super plant along with the coconut palm. The inner bark is great for cordage making and the wood is excellent for all methods of friction fire lighting, be it a bow drill, hand drill or fire plow. But that's not the topic of today's episode. A couple of episodes ago, we had a look at the construction of a lean-to shelter and springy bow bed. Four years ago, I built a raised jungle shelter, also thatched with cabbage tree palm leaves. And I've had a number of questions on how I went about doing this. Now, four years ago, when I built this shelter, I didn't film the construction. I just took some pictures. So what I thought would do is go back and have a look at the construction of this shelter using those pictures along with some recent footage that I took of this shelter because it's still standing and I still use it. So let's have a look. What you're looking at here is some pictures that I took of the construction of the shelter because at the time I didn't film it. And uh, in this first picture we can see the framework of the roof which is very similar to the lean-to shelter in our last episode on the cabbage tree lean-to. Framework's very similar to that and you'll note in this one, because it's a raised jungle shelter, we've got a raised platform. And the platform is attached to four live trees or saplings. And to those saplings, I've tied some bases. And on top of these, which we can't see in this shot, there's actually some Y branches on each uh, upright uh, sapling. And that's helping us reinforce the uh, parallel logs on top of which we uh, have our, all our cross supports. And here's another view of the same shelter with a little bit more development. And we've started to thatch the, the roofing material. Once again, always thatching from the bottom up in rows. And of course, using dead cabbage tree palm leaves on this. Another view of the same, uh, the same stage, but note the uh, extra support underneath the cross supports at the bottom on all the, the live trees that we used here. I used a Y branch to support the cross pieces, which was then tied to the uprights. This gave it, uh, gives the whole shelter a lot of extra support so it won't collapse. Here's a view from behind, and you can see the thatching uh, done from the bottom up in rows. And you note that it doesn't go all the way to, down to the ground. This area received a lot of uh, water, so I wanted to make sure that when, when it was, in, in, a, in, a, when it was in, in lots of rain, we've got a clear uh, area for the water to flow underneath. And hence, that's why we have a raised platform in this area. In this shot, you see that we've added, I've added some, uh, some A-frame to the front, which is allowing us to construct an eave and this gives us a little bit of uh, extra protection from the from the rain coming in it allows a, a, a greater area to be protected to, to be protected from the rain and it allows us to uh, put some cross pieces in for our side thatching in this shot we've uh, i've started to uh, put the framework in from the uh, from the side thatching and you'll also know that notice that there's a support underneath the bottom of the shelter in the middle, reinforcing that uh, uh, the, uh, the stabilisation of the platform. The platform has also been finished here. Here's an inside view. I camped out in the shelter overnight. You can see the finished uh, platform, as well as the one of the, the finished sides. And with a, a lantern inside, is actually quite quite nice and actually lit up the place quite nicely. Another view of the same thing and there's a bed now which I've created out of uh, rushes. In this case, this was a uh, saw sedge or garnier species. And I've turned this into a rolled up bed roll, which I then uh, laid out on top of my um, base of parallel uh, saplings. And this is very, very comfortable indeed. And here's a look at the finished shelter. In this shelter, we see the full thatching uh, all over the, the uh, roof and the front eave using dead cabbage tree palm leaves and of only because I ran out of dead ones in this case, I use green ones on the side. Now these will shrink, or they did shrink, and I would have to touch these up as well, but where possible you'd use dead ones to avoid that shrinkage. And here's a look from the back. 
and I've just reinforced the very top. There was a couple of areas that uh, with some rain was seeping through, so I've just reinforced that with a few extra uh, green cabbage tree palm leaves, and because that's what was all available at the time. And uh, when you're constructing a shelter, you need to make sure that you're continually upkeeping the shelter. You'll find you're always going to have to do repairs on an ongoing basis. Once again, a different angle from the, uh, the same stage. And here's a different shot from the front. And you can see this is a, uh, about a couple of weeks, week or two later, you can see things are green starting to die off. And it started to get a little bit weathered and I'll note that I've got a fire tripod in, at the front and some uh, cabbage tree palm leaves on top of that. This acts as a good uh, rain uh, a roof for the fire. So that's why we always keep our uh, stalks or the ends on our tripods extra long to It gives us an extra water protection on the fire if we've got some good, decent sized leaves. And here's a different angle and in this we have a fire reflector built in front of the shelter, not so much necessarily to reflect heat back into the shelter because it's too far away, it's more of a light, uh, it's more of a, a wind break because you get some wind, I find it helps that way and it actually re it tends to reflect more light than anything and it just gives me another area to hang things from as well. This is a shelter I constructed about four years ago and it's still upstanding. In essence it's a lean-to shelter with a, an E and side, but more particularly, it has a raised bed. And I've used the existing trees to help the support. I've got some, a whole stack of parallel uh, logs or sticks on here on, on top of a framework. And on top of this, we have a mattress made out of sauce head. And I stay in here many, many times. And it's still nice and strong, still very comfortable and the reason we want to be off the ground in this area is because there are ticks and there are leeches and there are snakes and all that sort of stuff. So ideally in a wet environment you want to get yourself off the ground as best you can. If you don't have a hammock, this is one way you can do it. However, it takes quite a bit of time to, to, to construct. We've thatched this with dead cabbage tree palm leaves because the dead cabbage tree palm leaves don't shrink. That's why I always do use dead ones as opposed to green ones. And um, they're very plentiful in this area. So that's why I've chosen this one. But uh, it's still a great shelter uh, and uh, it's still standing. When I thatched this shelter, I used dead cabbage tree palm leaves and we used a stalk thatch. And what I did using the framework, I started at the bottom and I went all the way along the bottom in a row. Then we started at the other end and overlapping by at least half, went all the way across the, uh, again. And we kept on going across, 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 until we reached the top. It's very important that you have an overlap by half to achieve good watershed, the same way that tiles are laid on a roof. And then over the front we constructed an eave, um, which gives us an extra couple of feet in front of a shelter and stops water getting in. And these were dead put on three to four years ago. It really has, has held up very, very well. Occasionally you get some, the odd stick branch, it'll fall through it, you just have to touch it up. But other than that, it hasn't required a lot of work since I've built it. But very important to get that overlapping principle um, in order to achieve good watershed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short episode on the raised jungle shelter I constructed four years ago. If you'd like to check out some of the courses we offer at Bushcraft Survival Australia, go to our website www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au If you like these episodes, don't forget to like it, share it and tell others about it and that way we can rekindle and promote bushcraft in Australia. My name's Gordon Dedman, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode.